For anyone who follows the reality show Pawn Stars, Rebecca Romney is a friendly face who has appeared on several episodes to appraise rare texts that turned out to be worth thousands of dollars. I see 1864 in North Carolina. That automatically says, oh, I see why you called me in here. The Civil War is one of the most traumatic and life-changing events in the history of our country. But sometime in 2015, this face became scarce on the show, fueling several rumors on what might have happened to her collaboration with the show. Unfortunately, Rebecca's disappearance from the show is linked to an unfortunate turn of events that made her bid the show goodbye. Before now, even, many have questioned the authenticity of experts featured in Pawn Stars, with some dismissing their appearances as a mayor stage-managed appearance, designed to help the show owners get as much profit as they can from customers. So, one might ask, what exactly happened to Rebecca and where is she now? Is she even who she is portrayed to be on the show or just a front? Well, to verify Rebecca's place, let's look into the career and growth of this character. Her early life. Rebecca's journey to becoming a book whisperer is a fascinating one filled with unexpected twists and turns, stemming from an obvious revolt from her family's career path in science to a promising career in arts. Anyone would have sworn that Rebecca must have grown up surrounded by literature and a family of art-loving people, which could be the one plausible explanation for her career path. But you will be totally wrong if that's what you think. Born Rebecca Angeline Ongjong, Rebecca was surrounded by beakers and Bunsen burners, but later on in life, Young Rebecca felt a strong pull towards languages, particularly those outside the Indo-European family, leading her to the study of languages, cultures, and history of ancient societies in Brigham Young University in Utah. Rebecca's success in the study of the classics and subsequent successes in the industry might have its roots in a supportive family background that went over and beyond to support her dreams, despite the obvious deviation from what the rest of the family is engaged in. Rebecca pursued a degree in linguistics with a specific interest in languages, which was what paved her career path with the Pawn Stars. As an expert on the authentication of antique books that have made their way through the doors of the shop in Las Vegas. The Pawn Stars show featuring the Harrisons and their Las Vegas Pawn Shop premiered on the History Channel on July 19, 2009. It quickly became a hit turning the shop and anyone who walked through the doors as part of the show into pop culture icons, owing to the growing viewership across the globe. The Pawn Shop belongs to the Harrison family and is the birthplace of The Pawn Stars Show features Rick Harrison and his father Richard, who is fondly called the Old Man Harrison in the show and are considered the driving force behind the store. The world-famous Gold and Silver Pawn Shop is situated in Las Vegas, Nevada at 713 Las Vegas Boulevard South. Richard Harrison had experience in the pawn industry and has since served as the go-to person when faced with difficult decisions during the show and has shown to have a special love for old cars. While on the other side, Rick possesses strong business acumen, as is evident in his strong bargaining power, which has helped him get the best prices for items that walk through the doors of the shop. Before we look at how Rebecca fared with the Pawn Stars and what might have eventually gone wrong, let's look at the early career opportunities that led her up to that point. Entry into the rare book industry. After graduating from the university, Rebecca's passion for languages took her down an unexpected path. She landed a job in a bustling antique store, Bowman Rare Books, in 2007, where she was surrounded by a treasure trove of objects including, of course, some of the rarest books in the world. Working alongside experienced antique dealers, Rebecca's love for the tangible history held within these pages began to blossom, and she went on to develop an eye for identifying these texts and knowing what they're worth. Although Rebecca can be said to have been a little private with her life, we gather that after she was hired by Bowman, she went ahead to attend a rare book school where she will be better schooled in the dynamics of the industry. This showed her enthusiasm and longing, which propelled her career to the level it is today. There, she honed her skills in identifying different editions, recognizing signs of wear and tear, knowing auction trends, and understanding the factors that contribute to a book's value. All are skills that take a center place at the gold and silver pawn shop. 
The intricate details, the stories whispered from yellowed pages, all began to hold a special magic for Rebecca. Rebecca's dedication and thirst for learning gave her the tools that she needed to rise through the ranks at Bowman's facilitating the transactions that involved some of the rarest books that Bowman has built a reputation for over the years. She quickly grew an influence among collectors and anyone who fancied some age-old literature and soon had her eyes on going more mainstream with her career. And just like that, her journey took her to the Gold and Silver Pawn Shop in Nevada, and at this point, her reputation was never in doubt. Over the years, since the inception of the show in 2009, they have gathered an unimaginable number of followers, with the show anchored on the daily activities of the bustling pawn shop, filled with strong bargains between people who have either come to sell or pawn their goods in the shop and the Harrisons. Among these, there have been record numbers of customers who have had their items appraised to be worth more than they had imagined. And there are also many disappointments, too. With the entry of Rebecca into the show in 2011, she quickly became a well-known personality among other players and managed to maintain some kind of authenticity that has made fans attached to her personality, being part of the reason why many became concerned about her whereabouts when she stopped appearing in subsequent episodes of the show from 2015. The presence of her kind in the show has elevated the show from what might have been a mere show of bargaining strengths and profit-centered business to something that's a lot more educative with the potential of capturing the attention of people who are willing to learn about some of these rare finds. Her experience over the years has made her well-versed in the understanding of the value of ancient texts and has been found to give her one cent about different articles right on camera. She flawlessly traces the history and stories that surround the origin of some of these rare texts, making her invaluable to the folks at the pawn shop. Some might argue that she has given prior information on what she is coming to appraise, but it still takes her years of learning about these texts and experience in the auction trends to be able to make those recommendations and evaluations. Her skills have been a blessing to many who had gotten more than they had bargained for and has also watered down the spirits of some who came having high hopes on the value of the find that they have. Rebecca has since moved on from this level in her career, but let's take a look at some of the mind-blowing finds that Rebecca has had to authenticate during her time with the Pawn Stars. In season eight of the show, a man walked into the store with what he believed was one of the rarest first editions that one could find, a first American edition of Jules Verne's 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea, with an asking price of $10,000. The events that unfolded went to signify that without the help of the likes of Rebecca, things might just not go so well with the folks at the pawn shop. They obviously knew very little about the book, and it was time to call on Rebecca. Having examined the text critically, Rebecca was able to tell the stories behind the edition and how rare a find it was. In the end, the owner of the book wasn't totally out of place with his asking price, as she believed the book was worth a couple more thousands than the man originally asked for. From the interaction, it was clear that Rebecca is well-seasoned in her art, as we watched her devour every scrap of information she could find about the history of printing, the evolution of bookbinding techniques, and the intricacies of the rare book market. A really rare quality to have. This man was lucky to have done his findings really well about the book because not everyone who has their books brought before Rebecca has been that lucky. Some spend thousands getting a book they believe is rare, only to discover that they might not be worth that much. Also, in season six of Pawn Stars, Rebecca's skills and wealth of knowledge did more than get a good find for the pawn shop. It saved Chumley, one of the main characters in the show, from taking an unpaid leave after he bought a book without consultation. The book was written and signed by Charles Lindbergh, but without authentication, things can go south pretty quickly for such finds, and having paid $500 for the book, Chumley might have incurred a loss for the shop. Upon consulting Rebecca on Rick's directive, the book was found to be worth three times what Chum paid for the book. And that's not really the most interesting thing about this encounter. Watching Rebecca showcase her expertise and knowledge about these authors is a moment that any real book enthusiast will look forward to. 
Her presence in the show managed to cater not only to collectors who will be interested in these finds for their value, but also to people with an interest in learning about these things for the sake of it. She spent days in libraries, pored over auction catalogs, and networked with other booksellers. This relentless pursuit of knowledge became a hallmark of her career. And beyond her activities at the pawn shop, she generally grew in her career, even with Bowman Rare Books. In fact, her advancement with Bowman has been speculated to be the main reason she stopped working with the Pawn Stars. Sometime in 2014, she got promoted to manage a branch of the establishment in Philadelphia, and so had to move with her family, and distance quickly became a barrier to her appearance in the show. While on her career path, Rebecca already established a reputation for her sharp eyes and meticulous research skills. She began working with prestigious auction houses and private collectors, appraising and authenticating valuable first editions and historical documents. Bowman at some point placed her in charge of their annual catalog, which was sent to the many prestigious collectors that they cater to, being a testament to her dedication and eyes for details. Such heavy responsibilities demand it. Despite the fact that on her own, Rebecca has been doing great with her job and advancement, her appearance in the Pawn Star show was really instrumental in her later rise in the career path. It helped mold her reputation in the eyes of potential clients and must have also provided the experience and challenge she needed. When she joined the team, she wasn't just appraising rare books for private collectors. She was doing it on national television, with Rick Harrison and the crew scrutinizing every detail. The pressure was on, but Rebecca thrived in this fast-paced environment. She used her knowledge to identify everything from a genuine first edition of Charles Dickens's A Christmas Carol to a rare alchemical text, The Philosopher's Stone. These moments not only brought her face to face with priceless historical artifacts, but they also highlighted the thrill of the hunt and the joy of uncovering hidden gems, challenging what she knows and creating room for new adventures that would further solidify her claim as an expert in the field. Rebecca had to deal with sellers who mistook family Bibles for lost Shakespeare folios or believed their worn-out comic books were worth a fortune. These moments were a reminder that not everything old is valuable. However, Rebecca's ability to gently explain the true worth of an item and its historical significance earned her the respect of both sellers and viewers. She not only examines the value of the items that come into the shop, she does her best to carry the owner and even the shop attendants along as she delves into the hidden secrets that explain why she arrived at a certain decision. You could easily see how impressed some of these people were with her explanations. However, it seemed everything had an end to it as she later moved on to even greater achievements. She went as far as opening her own rare bookstore, Rebecca Romney Rare Books and has since continued to grow. While the fact that her moving away from Vegas is behind her disappearance from the Pawn Star show isn't absolute, as there have been some other rumors as to why she left the show. This other take is so shocking as it might have left a dent in her career at the shop. Not minding it might not have been any fault of hers. In a later episode of the ninth season of the Pawn Stars, a man had walked into the shop with what he claimed was a copy of a first edition of the Book of Mormon, which he had inherited from his family. But according to unconfirmed stories, there was more to this book that might have been responsible for Rebecca's later departure from the show. She appraised the book to be worth about $40,000, as against the $100,000 demanded by the man, which is one instance where the hopes of a seller get dashed by the real market value. However, being well-versed in the art of negotiation, Rick was able to bring that price down to $24,000, which could be considered a very profitable transaction if the market value remains as appraised. According to rumor, all hopes got dashed when it was discovered that the book was stolen from the Marriott Library at the University of Utah, leading to the FBI confiscating the book, eliminating every possibility of the store regaining the money that they had spent on the item. So it might have been that Rick got so angry that he spread the blame to Rebecca, straining the trust that had existed between the two over the years. So according to that speculation, this was the reason Rebecca left the show and might never be featured in it again. Many haven't been really sure how to react to this speculation.
with some of her most loyal fans thinking that if that were to be the case, then it must have been unfair for the store to blame her for the oversight. Rebecca's reserved nature has hidden specific details about her life and happenings within it from the general public. Therefore, most of the details about her remain just speculation. So what do we really know about this personality? Well, aside from her dedication and love for her art, she has played a major role in founding and growing some establishments that revolve around collecting and selling rare books. Take, for instance, in 2011, she co-founded Honey and Wax Booksellers Heather O'Donnell in Brooklyn, New York. Ever since, Honey and Wax Booksellers appears to have a multi-pronged approach, with goals and objectives that focus on both the business of selling rare books and fostering a love for book collecting, particularly among younger demographics. The establishment, as you would expect, caters to enthusiasts who are interested in collecting manuscripts, valuable first editions, and other unique written pieces. The establishment also got interested in getting some of the rare items from neglected demographics such as showcasing the works of women and people of color in their curated collections, potentially aiming to broaden the traditional image of a book collector and also preserve these pieces. Sad. And if you think that might have been the height of her achievements, then you will be totally wrong, as Rebecca has continued to make her mark. After she left the Pawn Stars, she started a little rare bookstore of her own with no collaborations, Rebecca Romney Rare Book. This is a move to maintain her ever-growing influence in the field. Based on available information, Rebecca Romney Rare Books appears to be a consultancy established by Rebecca Romney herself. She hasn't been very open with details concerning her personal life, so details about this establishment are still very much vague. But here are some things that we can make out from her moves. This consultancy likely signifies a shift towards Rebecca working independently, leveraging her expertise in rare book appraisal, research, and sales. And unlike her work with stores like Honey and Wax Booksellers, which caters to a broader audience, her consultancy might target a specialized clientele, ranging from private collectors to institutions. In the face of her ever-growing career and advancement, Rebecca never lost sight of her family, as she is married to J.P. Romney, who is also an author and shares in the dreams and aspirations of Rebecca. He has reportedly provided the needed support to grow her businesses while helping to promote them. They have two great children and are still poised for more achievements to come. There you have it, the story of the rise and shocking disappearance of a Pawn Star icon. What do you think about these events? Have you found any of them to be true or could she have fallen off the show for a different reason? Share your thoughts in the comments and we will see you in the next video.